shipping has always been a tough business. And it's getting tougher still for the people who depend on it for a living. These days, largely because of the increasing use of technology, manning levels are far lower than they were a generation ago. And straightforward pressure on time and the all-important bottom line continues to add to the strain on crew. As if that weren't enough, seafarers now face the often difficult job of defending their ships against people desperate, whatever the cost, to get on board. Finding themselves coping with stowaways. Stowaways represent a serious problem, one that is getting worse all the time. There are more of them, and the number of ports where they represent a high risk is growing. In some areas, there is even a professional trade in stowaways. Despite strong efforts by the IMO and other bodies to get an international agreement on how to deal with the problem, as yet there remains no agreed procedure. So immigration authorities can make it extremely difficult to get stowaways off a ship. Often, stowaways are neither nationals of the country where they boarded the ship, nor of the country to which it is traveling. Instead, they may be nationals of a third country. And since they often have no papers, this can make the situation even more complex and expensive to resolve. Stowaways now fall into four broad groups. The fastest growing category is that of the economic migrant, attempting to escape quite desperate poverty. There's also the refugee, trying to seek asylum. The criminal. This usually means people whose crimes were committed before boarding the ship. And the pleasure seeker. Perhaps less desperate than the others, but no easier to get off the ship. Any of these can cost ships and their management companies time, effort and money. During the last year for which figures are available, the cost of removing stowaways from PNI club members' vessels was over $5 million with individual cases incurring costs sometimes exceeding $250,000. And there are further hidden costs, including the loss of hire. The crew also face problems. It can be difficult enough when there's only a couple of unwelcome guests on board. But on a few rare occasions, crews have actually been outnumbered by stowaways. As the attitude of governments around the world hardens, the size and regularity of fines are increasing. As if that weren't sufficient, seafarers can now face jail. In Turkey, for example, ship's masters face up to two years' imprisonment if an unreported stowaway is discovered. And what if ship's personnel take matters into their own hands and somehow get rid of stowaways? Severe penalties have been imposed in a number of cases. In one such case in 1992, three seafarers received long prison terms in a French court for their part in the murder of eight stowaways. The master and chief officer of the ship were sentenced to life imprisonment. Desperate people choose hiding places that can be lethal. Imagine the horror of finding someone dead in a fumigated cargo hold. Or roasted in funnel spaces. Or hearing knocking from some inaccessible point inside a stack of containers, which then stops after a few days. Good morning, gentlemen. As you know, our next port is going to be Dar es Salaam, and after that, it will be Mombasa. Uh, we are, you, most of you have been to that port before and you know there is big stowaway problem. Huh? The key to this problem 
is prevention. And the first step you should take is to draw up an overall ship security plan. As well as protecting against stowaways and petty thieving, it can also fulfill IMO and governmental requirements against terrorism and the smuggling of illegal drugs. Your plan should cover all the measures you intend to use on board. These should include routine crew protection procedures, gangway duties, searching techniques, the duties and responsibilities of security guards, and any other measures you think are needed. For example, the use of locks, closed circuit television, CCTV, or alarms. Every other door must be kept locked. Don't open the others. At night, it will be closed, and only duty engineer will have the key. Huh? Ship owners will generally have to bear the cost of any precautionary measures themselves, as they're not usually reclaimable from the PLI club. What we must also be aware is, stowaways cost us a lot of money. Even so, these costs are worthwhile when you compare them to the time and money it takes to resolve stowaway situations, or indeed any security problem, theft, drugs, or terrorism. There are a number of technical measures you could consider. Of these, one of the most effective is a CCTV system. If you decide to use one, sight the cameras carefully. Some cameras can still work effectively when there is very little light. This is a useful security feature. Other types of alarm can also help. Infrared sensors, acoustic and pressure alarms among them. But if these are selected, make sure they are suitable for use on board ship. Before you enter a port, make sure you gather all the information you can about any stowaway problems in the area. Use all the sources you can think of. Your company, a local agent, the port authority, industry bodies, maritime journals and newspapers. Try to get a feeling for techniques stowaways have used before in this area. For instance, bribery or posing as stevedores, hiding in containers. Other masters may be able to offer advice, as well as suggesting measures they have found effective to prevent unauthorized boarding. If you know that the risk at a particular port is very high, and you're at all doubtful about relying on local guards, think about using a professional maritime security officer. Check all your security measures, including any CCTV equipment, alarms and locks, before you enter port. Brief the crew on the risk of stowaways. Make sure they're primed to report anything abnormal, and that they know what you expect of them in terms of your security plan. Once you're in port, consider placing warning notices outside the ship. These should be in the local language and should make it clear that stowing away on the ship could be very dangerous. For instance, you may want to warn people that cargo holds will be fumigated with deadly chemicals. It might also be worth setting false destination notices. After all, Somalia as a destination is probably less attractive to potential stowaways than Rotterdam. Lock or guard accommodation doors, including internal doors while the vessel is in port. If you can't use a lock, use tamper-proof or wire seals instead. They will let you know if an entry has been made. Don't open any access unless it's for an operational purpose. Close any access immediately it's not being used and make anywhere else that could be used to gain access to the ship as secure as you can. Floodlight the ship and the surrounding area at night. Keep a 24-hour watch. Give your watchkeepers clear instructions. They should be on the lookout for boarders, especially during the night. Allocate watchkeepers to every access point and make sure they've got a way to communicate and raise the alarm. Assign a crew member to gangway duty. Make sure they tally all boardings and disembarkations and that they know what to do when any visitors, repairmen or stevedores want to come on board. In particular, keep accurate records of stevedore gangs. Allow them gangway access only and if the cargo isn't being worked, clear them off the ship.
always try to control access to your ship. Keep the gangway hoisted when it's not in use, provided that you're not breaching any port or safety regulations. Organize random patrols. Ask them to check that locks are still locked and seals are still unbroken. And warn them to keep a lookout for people in unusual areas. Search the ship thoroughly before you leave port. Draw up a checklist to help you. The more dark, seemingly locked and unlikely the place, the more it'll be worth searching. If you are taking unsealed containers on board, open and inspect as many as you can. Seal them before they're loaded. Beware soft top containers. They're popular with freelance stowaways, that is, those who aren't part of a professional gang. It's absolutely vital that you make entries in the logbook mentioning everything you've done to prevent stowaways boarding the ship. If they are found on board, the master can use his checklist to file a comprehensive report. At the very least, this will serve as a reliable source of reference. At some point, maybe even evidence in a court of law. If you discover stowaways while you're still in port, it's essential that you alert port security and the local agent straight away. Make your first priority getting them disembarked while the vessel is still alongside. Search the ship again. There may be more people hiding that you haven't found. Whatever the other imperatives, you must, if at all possible, get all stowaways off the ship before leaving port. If you are underway when stowaways are discovered, separate them straight away and take them to a secure area. Where do you find these? Uh, Where are you from? I'm from Tan Tanzania. When stowaways are found, ask them to hand over the contents of their pockets and any other possessions to the master of the ship as soon as possible. Okay, stand over here. Let's go and search where they were, see if there's any bags, packages. Oleg, get me some paper, huh? Pencil. Get the areas where they were found properly searched for any concealed documents, belongings or drugs. Make certain that any documents and anything they have with them that could be used to inflict an injury are taken into custody and locked away. That bag is mine. Place all items that have been discovered in the search or found on the stowaway's person in a plastic bag. Make a list of all these items, put one copy in the bag and the other somewhere else that's secure. Keep stowaways secure at all times. They can put themselves, the ship, and the crew at risk if they try to escape. Treat all stowaways with humanity. Make sure they're given enough food and water and access to a toilet. Ensure that each one has a life jacket. Give them basic emergency training to cover things like fire or abandoning ship. In short, take appropriate measures to establish the security general health, welfare and safety of the stowaways until disembarkation. Search the entire ship again and record the fact that you have done so in the deck log. Many stowaways are reluctant to give any information about themselves, but try to get what you can. There are IMO guidelines available which list the sort of questions you should ask, as well as advising on how to treat them. Where do you go However, the, the master is not an immigration officer and should always keep in mind that the individual may have suffered a great deal and be under a lot of stress. Details that you should aim for should include their name, nationality, address, where and when they were born, any details about their parents or next of kin, 
Indeed, anyone who might be able to confirm their identity. What place did you come on board? Uh, I'm coming on board uh, by the gangway. Uh, and, what uh, country? From Tanzania. From Tanzania. What place? In Darussalam. Darussalam city. Also try to find out where they boarded the ship and how they managed to do so. And what kind of stowaway it is that you're dealing with. For instance, are they asylum seekers? If possible, take a photograph of each stowaway. OK, what will happen now is... Uh, I am now hungry. No, no, that comes after. What will happen now is you will go back to your own country. We will send you back to Tanzania. Uh, While you are on the ship, as we will as feed you. you. As you do. Yeah, I am a refugee now. Uh, I, I will uh, go in my country or I will go another country. It is you, you no, lose. no, you will go back to your own country. We send you back to Tanzania. As soon as any stowaways are discovered, there's a list of people whom you must tell straight away. That includes your owner and the managers and your ship's agents at the next port of call. Hello, Eck. Yeah, I've got a bit of a problem here. I've picked up two stowaways. Uh, I've let the agents in the next port know and they're going to let P&I know. We found one after about an hour after we had sound, and we found the second one a couple of hours after that. One was in the folks, or one was on the top of the bloody jumbo. You should inform the port authorities and the immigration officials at the next port, and also notify the local P&I club correspondents. And last but not least, notify the flag state of the vessel. While they're on board, don't be tempted to sign on a stairway as a crew member. If you do, you may run into problems getting them off the ship at the next port of call. Don't force stowaways to work, but if they want to, let them do so, provided they've been properly trained and are supervised. Make sure that the agent of the next port has organized local immigration officials. Aim to have them ready and waiting to accept the stowaways for examination as soon as possible after you enter port. Think about everything that you do in terms of presenting the best possible case at any later inquiry. There should be logbook entries giving details of all the precautions you've taken. These should include a thorough search before and again after departure, a statement about how the stowaways were found, and all the information you've been able to get from them. If this information is well presented and shows reasonable concern and effort on your part, it may help you later to minimize the size of any fines imposed on the ship and reduce the risk of the vessel being delayed should the shore authorities conduct an investigation. Following these procedures should help you protect your ship from stowaways. You should also study the booklet which accompanies this program. In summary, always make sure your crew are fully briefed, that access doors are locked and that the gangway is constantly monitored. However, if, in spite of all these measures, you do find stowaways, make sure you interview them, that you enter such documentation in the ship's log, that you contact the owners and other relevant parties, and that you treat them humanely and prepare them for repatriation. Take the threat of people stowing away on your ship seriously.